Hello everybody and welcome to episode 6 of the Contest Round Podcast. And as you all should know by now, where you can find us is on YouTube. We've also got SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes. All links will be in the bios of wherever respective area you are in. YouTube, SoundCloud or Spotify. You can find it or even I will announce it on Twitter. But we'll give you the links. You just have to click it. And make sure you're following, subscribing and all those lovely things as well. And this is episode 6. And this has been quite an incredible and quite intense week. Which we're going to deep dive and delve into in this episode. And as always, I'm joined by my glamorous co-host, and that is Dan of Frontline MCC. Hello, my friend. Hey, Rich. How are you doing this week? I'm um, I'm doing good. I'm have more of a relaxing last couple of days, especially because uh, well, both of us know there's been so many developments. It's nice to take a little bit of a breather and just assess some stuff. I completely agree because uh, that was quite a news dump of a week from Kabam. The hits did not stop. So. Mm. I think we should just get right into it because uh, version uh, 26.0 is on the way uh, next week. Mm -hmm. And we have more details than ever about um, everything that's going on in Marvel Contest of Champions um, for the upcoming month. And man, there is there is just so much uh, content. If you mm. thought February was boring <laughs> because, and there wasn't much to do, um, if March doesn't make you happy, you're going to have to find a new game because they are throwing yeah. everything at us next month. Well, I thought the um, thing was, you know, with D Dave's video gave us a little bit of a snippet of what we could have, but then there seems to be more stuff that wasn't yes. put into that video. And now we're like, well, okay, let's be excited. Yeah, no, I, I am totally excited. I think I think there's so much going on that it, depending on where you're at in the game, um, you know, there's going to be something for you. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, the headline for any month is always who's going to be the uh, new champions of the month. Mm -hmm. And we know for March we are getting Terax and Mole Man. Uh, Terax is a Herald of Galactus, and Mole Man is one of the uh, oldest Fantastic Four villains. Mm -hmm. So after a, uh, a few months hiatus from the uh, trial of Reed Richards, Fantastic Four, Galactus storyline, uh, I think we're poised to get an update on what Reed and the Silver Surfer have been up to since December and where exactly Galactus is in relation to the Battle Realm. Yeah. Uh, so as someone who loves the story, I am super excited to see how this is going to move us forward and if we're going to get more hints about Realm of Champions. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Like I had this theory about Galactus being somewhat of a linchpin to open up some said portal to whatever alternate universe is marvel realm of champions but it looks like it's it's kind of the case especially if we go back to that trailer that was about the five years and we had um uh, the watcher and we had like um galactus in the background but mephisto was kind of like playing around with with the watcher so there's whether or not that was a hint and how this story comes together and whether or not Silver Surf is not doing a good enough job, and then it's like, oh, Terex, go and sort out whatever was going on. You're failing right. in the battle realm. I, I'm, I'm just kind of like yeah. all over the place with that. I don't know where you are with um, the story. I am too, because the the event quest is called um, of rocks and rodents. So mm. it's it sounds like it's sort of this irreverent thing where you know Mole Man want squirrel girl to be his mole bride yeah <laughs> um, you know so it's like all right well that's that's way over on the on the sideline of, of the scale of of important things to us and then it's also like all right someone that that ties in with the fantastic four and and you've got a herald of galactus so now we're talking some really big stakes uh as far as you know the battle realm goes so i i don't know um but yes i i am hoping that um Terax is the subject of the, the motion comic, which mm. will likely be out sometime next week, and that we do get more hints of uh, where Galactus is at and, and sort of what's our timeline, right? Like that's yeah. that's what we really care about is but, what's the what's the timeline? But that's the thing, isn't it? With the with this whole kind of thing with Galactus and whether or not and it opens up something of a of a bigger picture, the weird thing is about uh, the data mine information, Otrix uh, in the last 24 right. hours is per something say I mean Doombots yeah okay we, we kind of had an idea that was coming as uh, those 
those kind of like avatars have been designed and put on the forums. You could have them for a limited time only or the Kabam uh, staff were able to use them. But the fact is the title for Act 6, um, it says the, ne the next act, act after Act 6 is Act 1, The Union. So that's saying that there's no Act 7. We're now getting a reboot of it. So a new story arc. Right. And I think we expected a new story arc. They've been saying that the Elder's Saga is coming to an end. Hmm. But with the I end... Think, yeah. I was going to say, with the with the end of like Act 6.4, where do you think that story is going to end and where we're going to begin? Because obviously Act... Uh, that will either close off and may start off the idea of the next one. What do you think it's going to be all about? So we're also getting Act 6.4 in March, which should have more story tie-ins to where we're going. Mm. Uh, it's pretty clear that the Grandmaster is the final boss of Act 6. Um, so much like when the, uh, when the Collector was defeated, the Grandmaster took over the contest. So if uh, the Summoner is going to defeat uh, the Grandmaster at the end of Act 6... Uh, that clearly points to someone else being in power, likely Karina. Mm. And then where does she go? We know that she's very different than the other elders of the universe. She doesn't want to be put in a box. Uh, and she clearly already knows about the realm of champions based on the dialogue from the trial of Reed Richards. Yeah. So that, that all seems to be pointing towards... Um, Karina getting involved with the realm of champions and we know that they want to do crossovers so whatever going is going on in realm is probably going to be influencing this new act storyline so yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about all of it but it's you know I think we all just want some deadlines right yeah um, I think that was one of the um, we things want, that yeah. Well, was it in Dave's video? Even though I think that people were satisfied with, because we did, we didn't cover it. I don't think on the the podcast, or if we did, we did it in a, a kind of a lighter sense. There was a lot of uh, yeah. demand from people from the previous Dave video that we need to know when these timelines are going in. But it was kind of weird because in Dave's video they mentioned about daily um, objectives replacing solo events, but that's actually coming in next month. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, daily and weekly uh, challenges. And as well, nothing mentioned about solo events being removed. So right. that was just so, so weird. Because next month, uh, as we even um, uh, alluded to, it's just so strange. Those Mole Man expeditions, they, they pick your own rewards. <laughs> How do you Love feel it. about that? I mean, yeah, it's, it's I, cool. I, you know what I like about it uh, is... With the rewards on the path, uh, if you don't have a ton of time, if, if you're in a situation where it, it seems like there's going to be an increasing amount of paths as we go on. Mm. So let's say you can't get 100 percent, you, maybe because of difficulty, maybe because of time. Well, at least you can do one or two runs through and get the stuff that's really valuable yeah. to you. I think... I, I think that's a very player friendly move. Mm. I, I like these quests that are not uh, these side quests that are not daily grinds uh, that unlock once a week that kind of allow you to uh, pace yourself. And we're always ranting about RNG. We don't have control. We don't have choice. Well, this this is the opposite of that. So I I say, uh, you know, kudos to Kabam for giving uh, players some choice and not have to 100% a, a quest with 8 or 12 paths mm. on it to get all the good rewards that do they you th want. Side wi side winding, seg segwaying a little bit, do you think, and there's something I've kind of alluded to, there's more push for quality of life improvements, so less yeah. time in game grind. Do you think that Kabam is saying, look, we want you to be able to play Marvel Realm a Marvel Contest of Champions and not have so much of an extensive need to be in MCOC for eight hours a day and like so you have focus for both games. I certainly hope so. As someone who wants to play both games, mm. I, I certainly hope that they are taking the quality of life uh, issues in the game seriously, uh, especially for arena grinders people that play the game a lot people that are officers 
it, it's not like we haven't brought all these issues up a thousand times before. So yeah. it would be nice to get some of these quality of life things in the game sooner rather than later. Um, I do think these solo objectives, daily and weekly, I wasn't expecting them yeah. next month. Based on Dave's video, it sounded like that was further down the road. Yeah. Uh, so they they kind of hid that pretty well. That you know it didn't it didn't seem like that was coming with the next update to, when they were talking to Dave. But I like this in that it seems like you can carry over a few of the objectives and that you'll be able to if you're just not going to complete an objective like remove have a chance to remove it and replace it with one you're more likely to do. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't sound like it's sort of this breakneck pace. Mm. Um, that the seven hour and the 22 hour, uh, reward, uh, objectives would be. So again, giving players a little time to breathe, a little more choice. That's yeah. all, that's all player friendly. I like that. I like that a lot. Mm. I, I mean, for, for me, it's, it's a weird thing to be playing other mobile games and seeing Marvel Contest of Champions just starting this and i don't know what's really the catalyst for change whether or not they've been designing some ideas with mrock and like as soon as they've been going like oh yeah what are you, what are you guys uh um with mrock up to uh, and they're like oh we're doing this daily objectives we're doing this kind of um we're gonna do this like uh, not sigil but this kind of like uh battle pass type thing and then it's like are the ideas then filtering over and they're going oh do you know what? well we should have done this what, what, do you, what do you think with this do you think that it's kind of like it should have been done a lot sooner or like what's well, the catalyst for change i i think that realm gives them a clean slate right mm, yeah so you think of mcoc started probably development what 2012 2013 yeah it was a long time ago especially when you're talking about mobile games mm. so a lot's happened and even in dave's video they talk about it right these yeah. uh the daily quests right the f the 7 hour and the 22 hour they were put in very early on when there weren't things like all these these crystals for logging in and these grandmaster shards and and all these calendars to entice us to log in and there wasn't AQ and AW driving us back to our phones yeah. so even they've talked about these are like the vestigial limbs of MCOC yeah. seven and 22 hour events, right? They, they've mm. been quite clear. They were put in for a purpose. They no longer serve these purposes, uh, but they have to figure out what to do with them. Now it's the same thing with duels, right? Mm. Is it was just a, a little event and it became something else. And, but now they have to replace it. Yeah. So I think, I think that's something that MCOC has struggled with a bit is, they they clearly recognize when um, something has reached its expiration date, yeah. but that doesn't mean that they can just take it out of the game. Well, maybe that's the thing that they a lot of these newer things that they've put in in order to uh, prolong the game, um, because there's so much of a, a dedicated fan base for this game with with other right. Marvel games. Like, um, and this is why I've got this kind of emphasis for if when I'm going to spend some some money. I'd rather put it into Marvel Realm of Champions because like any any business owner, any business um, person knows, if you start up something that's a, a sister company or a business within a business, it's a case that it's run as something completely separate. So if you kind of go, oh, I've just given £100 to Kabam, no, no, no that's, not, that's not how it will work. They'll run it as a separate right. thing. So I'd rather kind of go, right, well, um, I'm going to support this as soon as um, it, it kicks off because... It's going to be new, but it's going to be exciting. Because even even on, and again, segueing, because there's so many things going on. Like, there's packs on know, at the moment. And yeah, Net, it's a great time. Yeah. And Netmarble are going to announce uh, a new mobile game. Um, literally in about, uh, well, it's 4 p.m. in the UK, so we, I've got another four hours. Another four hours. Um, so once this podcast is out, they've probably done the announcement for the what is to be a potential um, mobile game that's... Uh, uh, Doctor Strange orientated, um, right. so that's going to be interesting to see. So many things dropping this week. I don't know whether or not there's going to be Marvel Realm of Champions dropped at PAX. We'll have to see as well. Um, I doubt it, but you know, could be a thing. But yeah, next next month, and we've got Boss Rush as well. We've got a Boss Rush too, and it's uh, the International Women's Day Boss Rush. And I think this uh, little bit got glossed over that it is another 
uh, community created boss rush is that oh. some of the um, some of the women of the contest are designing these uh, challenges. We know that our friend Dragon uh, oh. is one of them. Uh, she's revealed that. We don't know who the other uh, five are. I do have some guesses. I have some guesses as well. Someone that's just very recently been added to the CCP, which was uh, a, a previous guest, maybe? There's a, a good chance of that. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping our uh, our good friend Cat Murdoch. I'm hoping she is one mm -hmm. of uh, one of the choices. I wouldn't be surprised if Miss Insomnia is one as well. But yeah. we will have to we will have to see. I think these boss rushes are always fun pieces of content. Yeah, um, they give us something to talk about and and the community challenges. So I'm really excited uh, to see what the ladies have in store for us. I'm assuming that. It is six female champions uh, that will be on the map. Yeah. Um, so there's some pretty hard defenders out there. We could see an Emma Frost. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a Squirrel Girl there. Uh, maybe a, maybe Guillotine 2099. Mm. I don't know. Do you have any any thoughts about who we're going to see on the map? Oh, if, I, if it's Invisible Woman again, I'm going to be so annoyed. We had did we we had Invisible Woman I last would, time, didn't we? I would be shocked if Invisible Woman is not on the map, Ugh. and she's likely the boss. Uh, like the I, first lady of Marvel. Yeah, I mean, it's logical that that would be it, the thing. It's just like, it's one of these champions that I'm just like oh, I'm just so like. As a defender, it's a bit frustrating. So, um, well, luckily, it, in, in like Alliance know, Wars, I haven't actually I'm, faced off against her. She won't be uh, debuff immune uh. Um, with that node where you have to get to 15 hits before you do any uh, damage. Oh, no. <laughs> Otherwise, there's going to be people angry. Well, there's always going to be people angry. So if they're going to yeah. be angry, you should do something to really... So they have a reason to be upset, right? What? Yeah. What, what do you think? <laughs> um, upgrading five-star shards uh, from last time? Because it was 10,000 five-star shards last time. What do you think? Going to get a little buffer on that one? Oh, I hope so. I, I hope it's, it's six-star shards. I, yeah. I really love... Like, I would take... 2500 six star shards over the the 10,000 five star shards. Yeah, I agree. I, I would really like to see the the six star shard rate gain uh start to increase. Uh, yeah. I know that was a huge part of the conversations uh this week uh, mm. with relation to act 6 um rewards and I'm sure we're going to talk about that. A little bit later, uh, but I think they need to they need to find some selective cases where they're they're introducing more six star shards to yeah. your average cavalier summoner. So I hope this boss rush is uh, used as an opportunity to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that it's kind of like a, a thing that that they've been saying for a while, and even Kabam think this. They're kind of memeing on themselves when they say, "Well, there's more five stars and six star shards available in game." Uh, and that I think is something that's been the same, not argument, the same point has been kind of uh, peddled constantly. But I, don't, I think that people are kind of going away from that, especially with like gating systems, rarity of champions and doing act six, which Kabam kind of were, were kind of feeling. And again, we'll talk about it. They kind of feel act six is not going to be what act seven or act one union is, is going to be, which is. Kind of a weird thing because at times I feel Kabam go down the route of being hypocritical about points of going, you can't have more five star and six star shards. Oh no, but we have to give you more than more than in order to do rarity gates and other types of things, which they allude to and apologised for in the message on the forums on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. I can't remember when that went out, but yeah, I think it was Wednesday was the first announcement in the uh, what has quickly become the Act Six Point Four announcement saga. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so let's let's get into that. So uh, we're finally reaching the end of the Elders Saga, mm -hmm. and like you said, they admit Act um, Six has been a bit of a bumpy road. We started off with these uh, restrictions where you could only take five and six star champions in. They they didn't end up reversing that, despite a lot of uh, outcry. Mm -hmm. And uh, but after six point two, they did they did backtrack a little bit and say, you know what, they, these gates were too much. 
there were too many paths. We do need to streamline this. This was not hitting our objective. So clearly they had looked at the data and, yeah. uh, of how many summoners were completing uh, Act 6, probably Act 6.2 in particular, yeah. and saying that that didn't really hit the mark. Yeah, I mean, for for me, I mean, we, me and you have been in the same boat where we've been going, right? We need to right. get content done. Um, you're still getting the last bits done for the exploration of six point one. I've right. just done it, and something that I've mentioned in in videos, uh, and again, I'll reiterate the same point. I don't like reiterating points time and time again, but um, the point is still there. Twelve, it's taken taken twelve months to get the right champions to be able to hundred percent six point one without the extensive use of uh, of units and my own frustration. And even now, going okay, I can now go and do six point two point two where I didn't have a, a Captain America or a um, valid champion that was able to uh, do caustic temper and right. um, anything else with that Mister Sinister, which is going to be frustrating. Now I've got an option, but I thought I'll six I'll hundred percent six point one first so again time availability right champions for the job and yeah exactly time availability these are these act uh six lanes you have to preview the whole lane look at all the individual nodes on every single fight because they change up mm. uh, of course there's a there's a global for each map but every single fight you have to you have to look at you have to spend time mm. saying okay i'm going to use sunspot for this fight i'm going to use sentinel here i'm going to use hyperion here mm. okay i need eight champs let's go back yeah <laughs> let's figure it out so that's the that's the trick is it's time consuming to scout mm -hmm. uh sometimes you have to you have to start over uh, and each of the lanes might take 20 or 30 minutes yeah so that that takes time and of course if a q or a w is on uh, your A team and your B team are tied up, and mm. that means you're probably not going to be able to run it at all. So you're either stuck in these situations of like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock out one lane at a time, but mm. then it's going to get spread out over months, or you're going to say, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna block out this whole Saturday, yeah, and spend. Uh, what did you spend? Five hours. Five hours. Five hours. Uh, Dude, yeah. Uh, how many? I think it was like nine nine lanes of 6.1.6 .6. and I, I, right. I binge, as I said I binge watched the uh, Altered Carbon season 2 um, and that was just it was, it, but it was like I, and I was thinking about, do I want to live stream this and I was like no because I'm bored I'm, I, how can I be um, energetic as I normally am or kind of like interact with chat right. if I'm just like I'm not into it at all and that's that's something that I, I don't know if that's um you know that's that's just that's just me going like oh, I'd rather kind of like have that on the background than stream it, but I, I don't think it's very kind of like nice <laughs> for me. Oh, come to my stream! All you doing is seeing my head um, look down um, at a screen, just swiping and tapping, and I'm I'm not I'm in yes, no, as no I in chat. slog this out. Yeah, exactly. As it, as I fight the the six point one point six Sentinel boss for the eighth time. Yeah. In five hours. Oh. <laughs> like, that's. I mean, yeah. let's face it, five hours, like, that is, that's a, a labyrinth path back in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's just one-sixth of act one. <laughs> yeah. And and I, that, I mean, it's it's great, it's a lot of gameplay, but wow. Mm, yeah, just, just so time-consuming. And even, I kind of feel that it would have been it nice is. to have a few more, like, champions, but I was happy, that again, it's like it's being happy with the roster you, me and you were both talking right. about this. It comes to a point where you you will say if you're kind of just starting the game or you're kind of going right I'm one or two years in, there will come a point you'll say to yourself, right, I can do this content because I'm happy with my roster. Yeah, you can spend like countless amounts of money, tens of thousands of dollars, and be able to do it. But let's be real: if you if you don't want to do that, you don't have the resources to do that from a financial perspective. Then you're gonna to have to be, and as I keep saying, you got to be in it for the long game. And you're playing the long game by cultivating the champions, doing variants. They help so much by kind of grabbing those rank up gems, five star shards, six star shards. You, anybody kind of thinking that, oh, I'll never get to that point. You will get there. You've just got to be patient and it will it will come. Totally agree. I, I'm always preaching uh, patience. MCOC is not a game where you want to take shortcuts, where you want to take the easy way out. You mm -hmm. always want to 
uh, plan for the long term. Uh, my long term plan right now is making sure I have uh, 15k units for Fourth of July. That's yeah. that's my big goal in game right now because I feel like that is what I can do to improve my account the most between March 1st and July 4th is just to be ready for July 4th. Ooh, how many units uh, are you on at the moment then? I'm at I'm at 6,500 right now. I think we'll have to do like an update. So It'll be like, like wed wedding update yeah. for me, unit update for you. Just seeing where you are. Yeah, and I was I was at I was at a hundred or or less units at the end of gifting. Like I just wow. barely got that last gifting milestone. Mm. Uh, I had to buy some units on um, New Year's Day to uh, right before that to do that. I think it was it might have been Christmas. I might have had to buy some whatever they had the bonus. Um, mm. I, I had to buy a thirty dollar pack to make sure I could finish because I was I was out of units. But after that, it's pretty much been just arena grinding and the five dollar mm. unit card and the and the sigil. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, let's get back to Act Six. The um, the community reacted in uh, a strong way yeah. to the rewards uh, for Act Six. Um, there was certainly some disappointment from the end game community that mm. this uh, that these rewards did uh, not not take into account the time and effort that Act Six takes, yeah. and we're not going to be moving uh, their six star rosters forward in a strong enough way. Mm. And from the people that are behind a little bit there didn't seem to be any way to catch up yeah. in the same way that Act 5 100% um, did. So I'm sure you, I know you talked about this in some videos, and mm. I'm guessing you got a lot of feedback from your subscribers. Uh, how are you feeling about these Act 6 final rewards? Well, I, I feel this is one of these these points where Arkabam in touch with the player base because a lot of the times when it comes to a lot of that end game content i know people were pretty pumped about abyss of legends and a lot of the times a lot of that feedback i'm seeing in, in places that well what's the point of doing um act six uh from a completion of 100 percent if we can just like take what we've got and go and do abyss of legends for literally just what less hassle which potentially could be could be a thing if and when Act 6.4 is released and the difficulty uh, is there. So I think, again, it goes down to, like, Gabam understanding where they're taking the game as to what you need to prepare for the next act or the next iteration of difficulty, which, let's face it, is probably coming sooner than later. Right. And also, you know, what Kabam... Um, can do to kind of like uh, for us to go oh you know oh this looks good without having to complain first go yay first and not and, uh, and not have to complain which uh let's face it in uh there are, has been a few kind of like bits of com complaint about the way the game's going the fact that it's not bringing up the reward scale with it so i think that's really the the thing there uh you know with it, the feedback is we should have had improvement with the gen we should have a generic six star awakening gem instead of what we got a few other little changes here and there with upping them but um kabam are quite adamant that the next step is going to be or the next act is going to be the point that you start seeing better rewards which i don't know if i mean i don't personally agree with but i don't know where you're at with it yeah when i look at these rewards you know, I'm I'm a little bit uh, behind the curve. I'm not a a player that's bought a lot of Cavalier crystals, mm. so I don't have uh, a ton of six stars. I only have fifteen. None of them are duped, and my best one is Gladiator Hulk. So I'm still very much in that five star meta. I think the yeah. people who are talking about the six star meta, those are the spenders. Those are people who have already completed Abyss because they have the right champions. Mm -hmm. uh, if I were to talk about am I going to complete Abyss or going to complete Act 6 100%, well, I don't have the champions for Abyss. That's not on the table for me. Yeah. I don't have Doom. I don't have Aegon. I don't have Human Torch. I don't have a duped Nick Fury. It's just I, I can't do it. Yeah. There, there's no way. So I would, I would have to look at Act 6 because one of them is just a hard no. 
Hmm. Uh, so when I look at these rewards, there's a lot that can help me in these rewards. But, and I, I think this is the big thing, I don't think that Kabam put the cherry on top of the cake. Yes. There's a lot of good stuff in this cake, but we always focus on what's the what's the star on the Christmas tree, right? Mm. Like we if if this had um, some T five CC in the exploration rewards, yeah, and you moved the six star awakening gem um, to uh, the the completion rewards, you put the generic in the exploration rewards and just to be super nice, put in a, a one to two, six star gem crystal. Mm -hmm. We, we don't have these conversations. Now I realize we're talking about two or three really big pieces of rewards, but we're, people aren't saying like, Oh, there's not enough tier two a mm. right. Like they just, they want one or two things to stretch for. Yeah. When they announced Act 5 uh, with the Tier 5 Basic, the first we could get, that was a stretch thing for mm. us. When I looked at that as a, a player who was uncollected, uh, but had just done an initial run through 5.2 and an initial run through 5.3, nowhere close to 100%, I, when they announced Act uh, you know, 5.4 and the Act 5 100% rewards, I got excited because I'm like, that's the next step. I can mm. see it. And I'm going to go get it. Yeah. And nothing about Act 6 excites me in the same way. No, that's true. Because I, I, it's, it's not there. It's, it's not there for me. Um, mm. I, I know there's no light at the end of the tunnel at Act 6. I might have a lot of good stuff, but it's not, oh, I can't wait to do this so I can 565 my blade. And it'll mm. be my first five star champion, and I'm gonna murder everything <laughs> once I have that. Right? Like that's yeah. that was like three months of, of work and thinking. And then I got it, and then it was so awesome, right? And it felt like this huge accomplishment mm. in the game. Like that worked so well. And people expected the same thing from the Act Six rewards. And we were never gonna get rank four six stars out no. of this i think everyone knew that but take a little rng out of the awakening gems or or show us a little more in terms of six star shards and six star rewards because what mm. people are looking at this is i already need six stars to complete act six yeah so why am i building up my five star roster post act six for something that's harder than act six yeah, I mean, if you look at look at this in a way of going, because uh, we we all know everything's down to RNG. So you you kind of go right more um, than ever. Yeah, so I've I've just I've just done uh, Act Six Chapter Four. I've picked up the eighteen thousand six star shards, um, the uh, accumulative thirty five thousand five star shards, and uh, say I've got an additional like two K six star shards there. So that's basically I've got two six stars to open. And uh, let's just say I have three or four or five stars, depending on whatever is my crystal shard holding facility. And I get uh, two bad champions out of the six stars that I can't use to go back and help me out with my my kind of exploration. And the same thing right. applies with the five stars. And we've seen so many posts on on Twitter and other places where people have been doing things like Abyss of Legends, and then at the end of it, they've picked up two champions, which they kind of go, oh, well, that was, was that really worth it in order to get it? Right. So, yeah, there, there's always kind of then pluses and minuses to going, right, well, I get the gems. Um, do I have anything to rank up with? No. So you could be, after getting the initial completion of Act 6 feeling deflated because you've not got anything better right. that's going to take you even taking you further into the the next act started depending on obviously how difficult it's going to be yeah exactly and that's that's part of the problem is let's say you're just doing your initial clear of 6.4 so you know you're going to get those completion rewards for chapter four and the act six completion rewards in one fell swoop if you don't already have a six star in your roster 
that you can use the T5B and the T2A on, mm. you don't have anything else that's guaranteed, right? The rest yeah. is RNG on the six star shards, the five star shards, mm -hmm. the Cavalier crystal, um, and the Cavalier crystals and the five star rank up gems. Yeah. Um, when those five star rank up gems aren't going to, well, the, the, you've got the one, four to five, so that might help you. The three to four are kind of like, you know, they're nice to have, but mm. they're not something that you're going to rely on. So that that's tricky. Be, and, and a lot of people have complained about the Cavalier crystals. And this is one of those things where developer expectations and the community clearly did not meet. Because mm. they've said it from a developer standpoint. We look at the Cavalier crystals as a nice extra we are giving you guys. And the community says... We want something guaranteed. Those are RNG. Hmm. Side of a range of outcomes from those crystals. So we'd actually rather not have them because they're they're upsetting too many people. Yeah. So that it's really it is one of those things that it's really hard to know your customers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was upset for a good chunk of 2019. I've done in the space of a year uh, countless numbers of. Uh, I've I've probably done close to about a hundred. Uh, Cavalier crystal, so that's like uh, what thirty thousand units. Is, is that if my math is correct? Um, uh, and yeah, the feature. Yeah, I've never picked up a six star. Uh, yeah, I've picked up some good five stars right. here or there, stuff that I could potentially use. I mean, you look at the same thing with um, uh, the gifting event. I and like two to three three months, I think, of saving since New York Comic -Con, after New York Comic Con, I saved for saved and got forty thousand six star shards. And on Christmas Day, opened up an abomination, awakened my King Groot, Karnak, and um, Superior Iron Man. I, I, to this day, I have not used any of them except for Abomination on Caustic Temper for 6.1.6. .6. Am I going right. to use that champion in any other content? No. It was just a chance luck for me to go, do you know what? If I'll bring Abomination with me on that lane because I'm like, um, we had split Atom on it. So it was a benefit to me bringing in a champion that was um, Poison Immune, casted a Fury buff, and as well was just a class advantage for a couple of couple of those and obviously the split atom so that was the right. only reason for, for usage apart from that it's just the case of going and as you said it's it's down to rng i'd love for three stars not to be in the cavalier crystal but that, that's a decision by kabam which they they won't change that i i don't think they'll ever change that that will they'll go away when we get whatever is beyond cavalier yeah so um now the the update is to the rewards that uh, there was a huge forum um, to do about about these rewards uh, universally negative. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I I I think we can pretty pretty fairly use the 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 phrase universally negative mm. with regard to these rewards. Uh, people talking about effort, people uh, talking about RNG. And people talking about it not lining up with progressing their accounts, being fun, and and moving their rosters forward. And I think, yeah, for me that fun component is really important because we are talking about a game. <laughs> yeah, we play games to have fun, mm -hmm. right? And we want these rewards um, so that we can have more fun with these champions we all care about. Mm -hmm. uh, now the surprising thing was there was a lot of talk about this on the forums and. Uh, within the the CCP, we talked about the rewards for uh, pretty much forty eight hours straight, and <laughs> then came the the announcement from Kabam Mike that there was some agreement uh, yeah. with the player base that the one hundred percent Act Six rewards did not line up with players' expectations, uh, specifically as far as six star rosters. So. They're taking it back to the team. They're taking another look at it, and we're going to get uh, another update on Monday. Yeah, the um, uh, ending point uh, is that the first completion will still be geared more towards growing slash empowering your five-star roster, but 100% will be geared towards six-star champions. And whether or not that's implied that six-star champions being the... Um, uh, more shards or more rank-up resources applicable to that... That's good in some ways because that's something that we've we've talked about in in the episode so far is that 
you even though this will be kind of like if it's more shards then it's rng but if it's more rank up resources that's helpful because again it's down to specific stuff uh uh, gates and gating you know you might not have the specific uh, uh, mystic base champion uh, for a said route a five star rarity it's maybe not good enough and you may be struggling so this will give hopefully um, a little bit of a, a boost to those rewards but what, what do you think what do you think could be added Dan what do you think could be added that Kabam haven't maybe considered I don't know if it's it's something they haven't considered but I would really like to see a one to two six star gem in there. I Absolutely. Think, I think that would make people feel a lot better. And I mm. think that would be a great um, item to put in there that's not in there for a couple of reasons. One, it's clearly a six star resource that uh, maybe we've seen before, but in a very, very selective case, right? Yeah. And the other thing is it circumvents a lot of the inventory issues that people are having. Yeah. Um, people love these rank up gems because of that. Um, we, we all do. So I think that would just be a clear acknowledgement of resource cap issues and giving us a, a resource that is clearly designated for uh, six stars, even though uh, the, the tier five basic and tier two alpha um can be used for six stars and we're going to need them for six stars for mm. a very long time it seems like people are very blasé about tier five basic right now which yeah. is a crazy thing yeah i don't know whether or not that's something to do with um it's kind of weird isn't it where people's kind of uh, not allegiances but kind of thought processes go i do have a concern that maybe Kaban might put in something that is kind of um i'm going to say like a growing and empowering i don't know if that you know if that is that something to do with like um i didn't check did we have anything i don't think we had anything rewards for signature stones uh, i don't know if that would be part of no, what there's, for... there's no signature stones in there and i think um there's been a couple great videos about the, these rewards brian grant had a great one from the uh free to play perspective and as as the six star meta it comes to fruition for a wider portion of the contest clearly the top of aq is already there mm. um, if you want to stay in a top aq alliance you need to have completed abyss yeah because you need the prestige um but the only way to max sig your six stars right now is through cav crystals <laughs> yeah you can't do it through signature stones there there haven't been enough so it would be great to uh get some more signature stones some five star signature so stones some six star signature stones um signature stones have been one of the most gated pieces of um materials in the game when mm. it comes to the monetary gate so it would it would be nice if they uh loosened the purse strings a little bit and helped people out with some generic yes signature stones generic we we like those nice generic signature stones they're they make everybody happy kabam yeah it's kind of weird as well because i can't remember the last time we had something as a featured store special do you remember when they do those those little things yes. when, yeah i would always go hard on those because at least you're buying them with units yeah that you can grind out like most of the time the prices have started to come down and they've started to break them into smaller packs but for a while it was that combination of generic and class five stars signature stones you could get i think 80 for 50 bucks yeah and they would run that offer you know every every two months but that was it if you wanted to make a big investment in your prestige mm. you you had to buy those and those were expensive and it's not like you could even sig 201 champ off those yeah uh, it's very expensive to sig 200 a five star champion even today it's very tough for people to do and when you get into situations where you get a Silver Surfer or a Doctor Doom that leapfrogs everyone in <laughs> terms of prestige, yeah, right, like that, the game restarts. And if you had just used all of your signature stones on someone, well, you need to restock, and that that takes time. It's um, we certainly know that the the end game players are very active and talk a lot, uh, but I think for a lot of the hardcore players that aren't in the end game, I'm, I'm talking people, you, gold one to plat three that are mm. 
playing map five or Mac, map six every day, uh, a, a SIG 200 five star is still a really big accomplishment for yeah. those people. I think I've only got the, the one um, at the moment. I don't know. You up to a 200 yet? I do. I Only because of um, Cyber Monday was I mm. able to get five um, five star champions at SIG 200. Oh, nice. And that was that was a uh, that was a process. Mm. So, um, but that's why I'm so excited for July 4th, and why I said I'm going to save for the the 15k because yeah. um, when I look at Black Friday, that meant a 565 Sig 200 Sunspot and a 565 Sig 200 thing. Mm. That's that's a huge deal in terms of the content you can clear and the prestige bump. I, I bumped mm. myself 500 points right there. So that's that's the way I look at it is you got to you got to find the champions first off and then you have to have the plan together to get them all the way up. And, and it's tricky right now, uh, especially when it comes to six stars, because we just don't get that many swings at bat yeah. uh, with the RNG and and we're all over the place as far as this. But the six star basic pool um changes this week right with mm. the the featured six star uh when you talk about joe fix it and kamala khan and iron patriot eventually dropping to the basic it's harder and harder to pull a six star champion that you really need it's i need that egg on yeah <laughs> you know it's and I'm, i feel like i'm never gonna get him but that's uh, keeping with that subject but all, but segueing it a little bit when Kabam talk about and refer to the game economy, I understand that they don't want to put out too too much each month. Okay, I get it. You know, as a, as a game developer, you don't want to put out extensive amounts to the players to get. But when it comes to shards, because it's an, an, it's down to RNG of the champion you get, it's it's going to be a case of going. Look, I've had. You could say, okay, so I open up um, ten six stars. And um, even like some of the six star features that were open, people were opening right. ten a time, and were I was seeing more Joe Fixits and and more kind of <laughs> champions that that couldn't yeah. really be used in in different content. Yes, okay, that's good for stuff like uh, arena grinding, but again, that then forces someone into more of a quality of life uh, scenario where they're going, okay, well I've got champions that mainly more of a grind in arena, therefore. Um, have the things like six star shards and five star shards from the arenas being bumped up no okay when you put yourself back into a cycle then because you go right well i'll have to wait to my next five star or six star opening to see if i've got something actually good to get myself through act six so it's, it's a real process isn't it it, it is because you're talking about uh multiple months to get enough shards for a six star mm. just a basic Never mind. You you saved up the fifteen k shards for a featured, and you and you pull my boy Joe fix it. Yeah, like that. It just feels like such a waste. Um, and I really, really hope that now that we're through Abyss, now that we're through Act Six, there's there's more developer time to really focus on Cavalier difficulty. I think mm. we need it sooner rather than later i think we need it before the reset to act one the union because we need bigger chunks of six star shards to move mm -hmm. the average cavalier player forward and we need a, a tougher challenge to keep the real end game players who are just ripping through abyss and ripping through act six uh busy yeah <laughs> between now and act one the union yeah, I, the concern it is a, it is a real concern opening crystals. I've never been feeling more concerned now than I did when you know it, four stars were only prevalent back in 2015. That UK meetup, I've right. I've got scheduled about uh, depending on uh, content grind if I get get through it in time. But for UK meetup, I plan to open three six stars there with with people, and it's a concern. It's a concern for me to kind of go. Am I going to get any god tiers from these three that I open? I'm going for right. basics because I feel that if I went for two featured, I would could I would or could be more disappointed. So three shots against two shots. Um, yes, the pool's more varied. Yes, it could be more trollish. But at the end of the day, it's just a case of that. 
I've, I'm just going to open crystals and see what happens because at the end of the day, you can't guarantee your luck. People will say, should I open right. a six-star featured? Should I open a five-star featured? And you go, just just open because yeah. you don't know. You could be happy or sad. You got to gotta take the, the swings. But I do agree because I feel a lot of pressure with my sigil five-star featured crystal mm. uh, spins right now because – it's that difference in am I going to pull a dud or am I going to pull the champion in this pool that changes my account. With yeah. the last pool, I managed to get Sunspot, and that changed my account. Uh, if I can pull Dr. Doom in, I think we've got two shots left. If I pull Dr. Doom, well, that's, I've got a Mystic Gem. I can, I can take him all the way up. I can sig him up. That's a, a SIG 200 Dr. Doom. That changes my account. Mm. If I don't pull him, that changes my plans, right? Then I have to move on. All right, am I going to get long shot? Am I going to get mojo champions yeah. worth in worth that investment, right? That's that's the thing is, is you really feel like you're on the clock with these featured crystals because once it's just the basic, you've got what two-thirds of a percent yeah <laughs> chance to pull the, the champion you want yeah and you look at other people and and you kind of think why can't i have that person's luck a lot of times uh I, what after doing the uh four six stars on christmas day which was the abomination king groot karnak and uh superior iron man i was thinking like this is just ridiculous yeah. i laughed it off because at the end of the day I, I i know as well as most people go it's a luck based thing people would say okay you open your crystals with a pet method you do this method you'll get something good no no you won't you you won't <laughs> there's there's right. somebody that sent me um i think it was their open their six star featured opening and was like oh i got terrible champions uh, i think it was uh daniel daniel downing on twitter uh yeah. if, he, if he's listening hello um he he pulled some of the the, the terrible ones from the six star featured but then he like showed his roster and he's had su he's got sunspot corvus um the all of the all of the main hard hitters and I went, you don't need to complain you've got all the champions that no one else um, right that I, that I want and i'm like ah oh, just that everyone's jealous of so right right exactly it's well perspective is uh very important in this game and, yeah. and we all we're always riding the highs or the lows of our uh latest pull <laughs> <laughs> you know so because i i haven't opened anything for a little bit i'm waiting for this uh the the five star um featured uh crystal to reset in the uh, in the sigil uh mm. tomorrow and i think i've got three of these legendary crystals to open up from uh, love is a battle realm three two and mm. uh probably some basics to open up so it's it's just me wondering uh you know 24 hours from now am i gonna have a whole lot of nothing or yeah. am i gonna be talking about my next 565 champ like there's just such a wide range of a wide range of outcomes and and i'm excited for it but it, the last few have been disappointing so yeah it's uh it's a tough place uh to be mm. so um you know i think we've talked um talked a lot about act six um right now i'm in in no rush to even do an initial clear of it are you going to do an initial clear uh when it comes out i'm going to uh, it Everything is down to time at the moment. So I think tonight um, I'm going to assess my lanes for 6.2 and uh, do the completion, then um, assess lanes for 6.3 and then do a completion of that. I don't think I'm going to make gotcha. 11th of March on the release date, but I probably might make uh, by the end of the month. And uh, that's that's a lot really for me because I've not really stepped up my game. I've sat on 6.2. Uh, 6.1 in Act 6 for a whole, for literally for a year. Um, good chunk of the year, just haven't touched it. Right. Because of the fact of, yeah. well, I've not had the right champions. What are you going to plan to do? Or are you going to later on in the year? Yeah, I, I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to look at it later on um, in the year. Yeah. I think I, I'm probably going to start chipping away at uh, 6.2. I, I still have to 100% 6.1. I'm in no rush. Mm. Uh, one nice thing about these rewards is these aren't 
alliance breaking rewards yeah like with act five there was that incentive is you know if you were at a certain level of aq people were told you need to complete or you need to 100 percent um act five because you need a 565 champion because we need that prestige yeah so everyone knew they were on the clock at least with this the the upside is well I don't, I don't have to worry about falling behind in the prestige race for my particular um, alliance because these rewards aren't really impacting that. Yeah, that's a good you point. Know, that, that is, um, for the people at the top, that's that's abyss, right? Mm. So, But those people are, are spending their way through the RNG with the, the Cavalier Crystals anyway. Yeah. Damn RNG. There, there's only there's only one way to defeat RNG. <laughs> mm, that's true. And and unfortunately that is with the infinite wallet. <sighs> yeah, that's the thing. We yep. I, I think we've we've skipped over a topic which I have a grudge to uh, to mention. Oh, because... that's right. Um, you are. You are a salty boy on this one. Oh, yeah. We saw it coming, though. We saw it coming. We did. We did. It is disappointing to announce, if you don't know already, that Weapon X is now going to be the Legends Rewards. Uh, Legend Reward and... um, Well, I don't know if it's really referred to Legend, but the... uh, Within certain number of people that 100% act 6 now... I can't remember the full kind of, like, ins and outs of it. But, yeah, I'm I'm disappointed for this uh, to be... For this champion to be put in in this fashion, he seems to be good a good champion. Kabam have um, had a little bit of a joke in the synergies by make, mentioning about uh, not just a trophy, I think, uh, yes. which I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, will this champion be in a potential? It won't be. It won't be referred to as a gifting event, but whatever festive based event that maybe has a specific type of crystal. Not this year, maybe next year. Who knows? I don't know. I would say that Kabam would want to make some money from it potentially but you never really know but this could be a a definite champion for those to keep and that's it but um i i would like uh give give these legends run people their time with the champ give them a year yeah with it just having it but eventually loosen loosen up a little bit give it give us a chance even if it's a small chance like you have to get a a Thanos or a Kang or a gold pool. I think we'd all like that at some point. Make some people happy. Man. Yeah. We we like our Logan. We like him in his many, many iterations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, this guy looks pretty cool to play. So yeah. it would be it would be fun to uh, to get the get a weapon X uh, at some point. Yeah. Um and uh, actually one more thing is we're we're switching around. We we touched on the, the storyline uh, for this month and hopefully moving to uh, Realm of Champions, getting more teasers, maybe some more concrete information. Uh, they've currently been showcasing uh, one house a month. Yeah. And uh, they've they've showcased four champions, uh, four, sorry, four uh, of the kingdom so mm-hmm. far, right? So we've seen what's going on in Wakanda, the, the Iron Garrison, Vishanti, Patriot Garrison, so we've still got to see what's going on with Apocalypse, Hulk, uh, Thor, and Spider-Man. Yeah. That is... So that's four. Uh, we haven't seen Marches yet, so we're assuming March, April, May, June. There's been some talks from the Netmarble release that this game is coming in the first half of 2020. So June, July, global release. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's, that's going to be... Um interesting to see now I've, I've been quite vocal on this with um marvel games in 2020 so if you haven't seen any of the videos you 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 won't know but uh we had marvel super war don't even don't even go there i, I don't know what the, the developers up to marvel um uh, what is it marvel iron man vr for ps4 was meant to be released um a couple of days ago and that's been delayed till May. The Avengers game has been delayed till September, which looked pretty much done, especially from my conversations with the people at New York Comic Con in October of last year. So at this moment, because Marvel Realm haven't announced anything and Netmarble hasn't announced anything, they're currently winning the race by not saying anything. So um, I hope that it's the case that it's released then. Um, it's going right, to be a busy I mean, summer. Realm is winning 
because they never announced when the game was coming out. Yeah. So they haven't disappointed anyone yet. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it, Dan. You read my mind. Which, which is which it seems like a great strategy now. Yeah. <laughs> so we will see. But hopefully, uh, hopefully four more months. And that might line up really well because if we're looking at a, a March being Fantastic Four related mm -hmm. and we're getting Fantastic Four stuff that ties into Realm every three months. So that would mean the next one would be uh, in June. Yeah. And that might be the opening of the portal and the arrival of Galactus. So I really, really hope uh, that I'm right about this because I was so excited at Comic-Con and I know what people are saying. They want to see gameplay. I want to see gameplay too, um, but I guess I guess my main excitement is I really like the art that mm -hmm. I'm seeing. I like that it's a different kind of game and it's the customization uh, level involved in it. And at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm just a big fan of Gabriel Frazier's vision yeah. for what he's created. I think the best parts of Marvel Contest of Champions are his art and his story. And if you didn't have that, as a bedrock, um, there, the game would not be as addicting and, and great as it is. Yes, the, the gameplay and the challenges and the Alliance stuff all matters a lot. But um, I, think, I think he's got a real creative vision. So until I see something that I don't like, uh, I am in the uh, In Gabe We Trust camp. Yeah, that's the we you know from from meeting him and kind of getting an idea. I feel that he's very inspired, and this is very different. I know people might say, "Oh, yeah. they're the same or the design similar." It's it's not. If you look at any other Marvel game, you're able to make your Hulk look a certain way that's different from others. And yeah, if you look at like Marvel Avengers game that's the, the on PC, PS4, or console or whatever it is that's coming out. Yes, there's some customization. You get to be in uh, in different skin, but you can't customize your skins and your gearing in order to make it better for. Stuff. Right. It's like, you know, could it be a case of similarities to MCC? Of course, it's the same developer, but there's also same developer, same artist, uh, I mean, storyline crossovers. Of course, it's going to be similar. Yeah, they want it to be similar. They want to have a feel of a same universe. It's mm. uh, it's a concept that is very uh, prevalent in comic books. Yeah, that's and, what they're trying to do here. But imagine, imagine that like it, we we're doing like a, a special because it's because it's live, um, uh, live action multiplayer type type right, thing. Right. Imagine, imagine this. Imagine contest uh, the contest around podcast versus the unofficial Marvel Contest of Champions podcast. Did you imagine that that could be a live Marvel Realm thing that that happens? We're, we're kind yeah. of doing a special podcast where we do like podcast wars. Imagine that people listening. That's a revolution. That would be that would be fun. I I would be super into that. So I'm just um, I I'm just waiting. I I think it's time. I I think next month is going to be exciting um, in the realm of of champions department and yeah. is going to move us forward. I hope it's going to move us forward because I will be I will be disappointed if if we don't get something a little more solid. I don't I don't necessarily need a release date, but I mm. I need. To feel like the the ball is moving forward because it, it really hasn't been um, in 2020 yet. No. We got some we got some great motion comic stuff. We got some some awesome storyline in um, in December, but they've shied away from it for mm. uh, the last two months. So it is time. Yeah, three to four months potentially uh, when the game is going to be released. Uh, the, the hype needs to start building now to. Uh, to kind of get people's appetite just you know everyone's chomping at the bit hype. salivating for it yes we need hype we need memes we need uh speculation scandal we need lots of great buzzwords um, <laughs> <laughs> to put on the uh on, on the the video slides right yeah that's true right i think that is uh that is all of our topics smashed out yes and then some so that's well, Rich, it was excellent talking with you. Uh, what I, I see you released a ton of guides, grind guides uh, this week. Super helpful for everyone looking for five star, six star shards, catalyst, signature stones. So definitely check out the uh, Rich the Man YouTube page because Rich is 
the man who's working hard for the community, especially this week. Thank you. Uh, what what have you got? Do you have anything left in the tank for us <laughs> next week? Do you know what? I've I've kind of not. I kind of feel like I should have. I should have waited around. I think it's because of these this resource finder thing that Kabam are putting in that scared the living bejesus out of me. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm, at, <laughs> I'm going to be out of a job soon. Um, I'm going to have to think about what... I, I might do some opinion-based videos, maybe a couple of comic book theory-type things. And the Marvel Contest of Champions news, as, as always, will, will be there. Um, but I, I hope it's a, it's a busy enough week running into stuff. But, yeah. What are you up to? I am working my way through the uh, the back half of my Variant 3 guide. So Ooh. that is my main priority. And other than that, um, we're awaiting news of who will be the first champion in March. We mm. know the first champion in March will be released on March uh, 12th. Yeah. So hopefully um, by the next time we speak, um, we will be outside the embargo for uh, testing for whatever that champion is, and we'll be able to give a review. So um, the the top of the month is always very exciting uh, for me because I love champion testing, mm. and um, I will admit Ter- Terax and Mole Man are know a ton about, but I'm excited for what they mean to the storyline. And they seem to have some cool descriptions. And I liked that this Mole Man Gigantor Jr. thing <laughs> seems to be a little bit different. So I'm looking to see how that all works. Yeah, I've got my theories. It could be something like a, the, the Korg Meek type of working together. But that's something could for... be a little bit. Could be a little bit. And, and hopefully that just brings us one step closer to them finally putting Kitty Pride in the game with her little helper Lockheed for some mm-hmm. nice incinerate damage on top of all that phasing absolutely and on that note thank you to everybody for listening to uh, the episode six of the contest round podcast as you all know youtube soundcloud spotify itunes all links to that are in the bio and uh, join us all next week for episode seven goodbye <laughs>